Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agassino Zynga, and this is episode number 407. This is actually 407. The previous episode was 406, but I got the numbers mixed up as per usual, but this is 407, 407, 407. How are you guys doing? How are you guys feeling? Good, amazing, good to know. It's Agostino here. It's your show. Of course, if you're tuning in via YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, hit subscribe, and leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast site, please leave me a five star review, download the show, and share it with all your friends. And of course, support for your Patreon is always more than welcome. You can find a link in the show note description down below. Make sure you click on that link, patreon.com forward slash Agostino, to get access to my entire archive as well as one bonus patron only show only available through Patreon. So make sure you sign up on there. Do not delay. Do it today. But yeah, how's it going, man? Good, good, great, amazing. Um, might as well get straight into it, innit? Might as well get straight into it. Don't want to waste any more of your time. Um, got many, many things to kind of get in on. Loads of topics to kind of uh, tear through and, you know, lend my um, ever-knowing eye and opinion on. Um, and first things first, innit? Just to get this out of the way and to make sure I speak about it. United have just come off the back of losing 3-2. Away to home to Red Bull Leipzig, which means that we're out of the Champions League. We're out of the Champions League and in, in the group stages. We're not reaching the knockout stages. We're out. And more likely than not, if we keep this manager in place and we keep the current structure we have in place, we're probably not going to get the top four either. Um, and yeah, man, it's just frustrating. It's so frustrating watching my team play football. There's nothing else that needs to be said. It's just a frustration fest. There is nothing about, like, I don't see the end. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, when are we ever going to get good again? I don't know. When are we ever going to be a top side again? I don't know. I really honestly don't know. Part of me thinks to myself, like, you know what? Take off my reactionary glasses and just think, you know, what are the actual issues that, that are in place? Um, who is really to blame? Because, you know, as per usual, when you get knocked out of such a illustrious competition, the blame game starts. But let's not look for the easy targets. Let's really think about this properly. And if I'm honest with myself, until we change ownership, until we change how we operate as a football club, we're never going to be a top football club again. We're never going to be there. We might be there and there about because we always tend to have good players in our team. I think we're, we kind of avoid, um, you know, slipping into... Um, what slipping into the stasis that Liverpool or Arsenal or Liverpool that did prior to Klopp and Arsenal are currently in because we just have good players we kind of get away with it right we have a pretty decent academy um we seem to bring through a lot of decent players we seem to always sign a decent player here and there which kind of tends to paper over the cracks and with that you can get away with it in the, in the Premier League especially if you have like a dud year like this year right this year's been a bit of a dud the top teams haven't really been complain to a level that they should be playing at hence why Tottenham are kind of pulling up a lot of trees and really kind of staking a claim for maybe a late you know maybe a surprise title challenge but when it gets to the Champions League when it gets to those sort of levels of competition you can't really paper over cracks they all get exposed right and what I saw today against Red Bull Leipzig was not only the exposure of our lack of maybe style of play our lack of a system our lack of tactical fluidity, um, our lack of really big game moment clutch players. It was also maybe a real exposure, a real kind of exposing of our lack of structure as, as a football club, right? We're not really put together in a way where we are kind of constructed. No, we're not really put together in a way that you would think that we're trying to be the best club in the world. We're not really put that way. You don't, you don't really get you don't really get the feeling that the Glazers or Ed Woodward or Matt Judge or all these other people sat down with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and had a plan in place where they were thinking, hey, we want to try and win the Champions League. You don't really feel that. You don't really feel they're trying to win the Premier League. They're just trying to do their best in cup competitions and potentially go the distance when it comes to the league. But there's no real oomph. There's no real drive. There's no real um, plan in place. And I think it's been reflected on the pitch. We lost 3-2 against Red Bull Leipzig, which probably isn't a bad result, all things considered, or, you know, well, in isolation. But then when you kind of marry it up with the fact that we lost at home to PSG, and then we dropped points away to Istanbul, where right? we lost 3-1 to a pretty crap Istanbul team, we really gave ourselves no possible chance to get out of the group, even though we started the group really well. 
by beating Red Bull Leipzig 5-0 at home and then beating Paris Saint-Germain. So the team has the obviously the capability capability to pull the performance out of the bag. But when it comes down to it, really, overall, are we that surprised that a team full of Maguire's, Lindelof's, Aaron Bissakas and Luke Shaw's couldn't keep out a very potent a Red Bull Leipzig attack, especially with their fullbacks? Are we really surprised that we couldn't maybe... Um, connect the ball from the midfield to the strikers up front because we only had two deep landing playmakers who are not the most mobile don't have the best passing ranges are we really surprised that maybe all the confusion around Paul Pogba's future still three or four or five seasons on is kind of maybe um, affecting the team seeing he's one of the most popular players in the squad are we really surprised no but it still hurts man it still hurts because this game was there for the taking Rebel Leipzig, fair enough. They absolutely bossed us for the first half, right? They knocked us about. They stretched us from left to right. Ju um, Julian Nagelsmann did, did his homework. He didn't repeat the same mistakes, same mistakes he did um, when we played them at home, right? And if anything, even if you watch that game at home, it was a 5-0 game, but it wasn't really a 5-0 game. We just took all our chances and they didn't for the most part. But we didn't exactly destroy them with our play. They destroyed us tonight. They destroyed us. They pulled us apart from left to right. They had attacking fullbacks, absolutely exposing our fullbacks who can't defend. They reduced the ability of our defenders to bring the ball out from their back. They stopped basically Matish and McTominay from carrying the ball out, to the, out from the midfield into maybe someone like a Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes was anonymous. Bruno Fernandes hardly touched the ball in the first half, maybe for the most part. Maybe towards the end of the first half, he had, he had a few good shots on goal. And second half, he kind of kicked on for a bit. But he was quiet by his own standards. Why? Because Red Bull Leipzig completely nullified our attack. They didn't give us any option, any ability to carry the ball through the lines and get them to the players that are really going to hurt them. Which is why most of the time, players like Mason Green had to drop deep you know, skip past two or three players in order to get the ball forward up front. But they weren't allowing us to create any patterns of play because they knew where our danger points were and they knew how to exploit them. They completely tore us apart. If not for a couple of uh, out, you know, a couple, it's probably one um, ruled out goal. It could have been, it could have easily been four or five nil in the first half, easily. We didn't have a kick in that game. We didn't have a kick. And then suddenly he changes the formation, changes the shape in the second half. And we suddenly kick on, we start attacking and we start playing a much better brand of football. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has to take a lot of the blame for this. It's not all his fault. I still think a lot of those players let down, you know, let the club down in general, right? You, 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 the likes of your Harry Maguire's and your David De Gea shouldn't be letting that third goal go in under no circumstances. You might get blitzed in the first 20 minutes and you can excuse it for not having the shape in place and it being maybe the big stage of nerves. But after that, you should have like an agreement between yourselves as defenders that you're not going to let anything else go in. You're going to die on that pitch. You're going to give us a, the attackers the best possible option to make sure that we can win. And they didn't do that. That third goal with, from Justin Cliver was embarrassing. Embarrassing at the end. How are you letting that goal go in? It didn't give us any opportunity to score. And I always had a feeling, even at 2-0 down, there was still an option for us. There was still a possibility that we could have a little late rally and score. Two goals in order to get us through to knock our stages. Now, would we have deserved it? Probably not. Would we have probably um, won the Champions League? I doubt it. But again, it's a cup competition. Who knows? Gives us an opportunity to kind of build from that. But he doesn't. And again, this all stems from the selection to begin with. I don't understand how we can play five people. We can have five defenders at the back. Two sitting defenders, right? That's how, this is the formation I've got here on the screen. We have five defenders playing. We have Tellez, Luke Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof and wan -Bissaka, and two DMs in Matisha McTominay and we still conceded two goals in 25 minutes. Please, someone tell me what the hell are these guys doing in training? Now, if you want to tell me, oh, it's not Solskjaer's fault because it's not him's fault to let the first goal go in for after one minute. Okay, fair enough. Sometimes you can get caught cold, right? It's football. This shit happens. But the second goal, it was a carbon copy of the first just on the other flank why and then we considered the third but it got ruled out for an offside right i think or something so we could have been three goals down before half time which definitely would have been curtains because we would have came out quickly on the second half they would have scored again on the counter and then the game would have been over before one how is that possible how is that possible
it has to be stuff to do with training because there's definitely a way i definitely agree with some people have said where there's probably not enough width in the midfield to protect the back line right they're probably too exposed i get that because you know if the ball comes out here to on tellers and somehow um luke shaw gets drawn in in the middle uh Matt has to come out as well so it leaves loads of gaps in the midfield i get it i understand but there's a way to play with five at the back that that you kind of allow yourself to be as compact as possible so that when you do break, you can then break with speed and power and you have your options up front in order to get the ball further up the pitch. There is a way to do it, but we don't seem to be able to do that. And I don't know why. If this is one of um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preferred formations to fall back on away from home in Europe, we should have a way of playing this way in an efficient way that gets the best out of the players we have available. Luke Shaw supposedly is meant to be the best um, his best position is meant to be, you know, left of a back three. And he was terrible. But again, why was he picked? He's been injured for, a, what, a good two months, maybe? Or a, maybe one month or f six weeks or something? And he's coming off, off the cold, playing an away game in a Champions League against a team that has very quick and mobile players who interchange positions. It's probably the worst game for him. And he had an absolute shocker. So did Aaron wan -Bissaka, And so did maybe our entire back end, maybe to the exception of Alex Tellers, who probably put in a few good set-piece balls, was offering a bit of a threat and whip from the left-hand side. And then guess what, half time He hooks Tellers. Makes sense of that. Brings on Van Der Beek. Leaves on Luke Shaw, who then ends up getting injured. He has to bring on Brandon Williams later on. I'm just like, I don't know, man. And then who came on after that? Aaron wan um, Axel Twanzebi, and Timothy fosu -Mensa. Are you insane? And we're trying to win the game. Pogba came on, of course, and, you know, did what Pogba does and had a pretty decent game. So when you look at the numbers, right, he contributed. Of course, he scored the goal to make it 3-1, and he made some very incisive passes inside the midfield. But we know this already. We know this. We know how much of a good player he is. This is not a surprise for us. Of course, the conditions aren't necessarily helpful. He obviously wants to leave. He doesn't want to be at a club anymore, and the club are maybe holding him to ransom because they haven't got the fee that they want. And they don't want to get embarrassed by ha having him let go by basically allowing him to be uh to be sold for a cut price fee and then for him to pull up trees and become a ballon d'or winner in the next club i know what the club are like right they're, they're, they're a bit small-minded that way but if that's the case then i don't know sort it out because we know what his attributes and his skills are and what we've seen so far and again in my opinion is we've seen an inability for our club to recognize what the actual issue is the actual issue that's happening here, I think in general, is that we don't have a structure and a system in place that's going to allow the club to be great again. Where's our sporting director? Why don't we have somebody that's acting as a buffer between some of our high profile players and maybe members of the media? Why is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer before a big game having to answer questions about Paul Popper's future at the club? Why is Mina Varela talking out loud about what is going on with his client at the club? Because we don't have a sport director that he can maybe liaise with in terms of understanding where he sits with the club, where the contract negotiations are going to be, is he going to get sold? We need somebody in there just to kind of steer that shit. But it feels like United are reluctant to sign a sporting director because they don't want to give the power to somebody else or because they don't want to hold themselves accountable to that person that's going to do that job. Because if you come in cold and you're somebody that's fresh and you don't really, you're not familiar with the United hierarchy, you're going to have your KPIs in place. You're going to have some goals in place that you want to achieve. You're going to have some markers. You're going to have some targets that you want to go after. And the moment the club fail to get those, it's going to be very evident and very clear who the problem is. And they don't want that. They want this amb ambiguity, this confusion, this vagueness that we have at the moment. Who's signing the players? Is it is it, is it Ed Woodward? Is it Matt Judge? Is it Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? No one really, really knows. So they kind of feed off of that. That's what it kind of feels like. They don't want accountability. They don't want someone who's going to be in there doing that job, you know, um, for a set period of time with targets in mind, with a great CV, with contacts everywhere, because the word will get out that we are not a serious football club and they don't want people to know that. That's that's the only reason I can think. Because if you've got anything on social again, who's obviously an inexperienced manager at this level, even though he's been managing for 10 years, he's been at the job, what, 40 more games than... Um, Julian Nagelsmann at Red Bull Leipzig, right? And they play way better football than us. They probably have a far higher ceiling than us at the moment, even though we have quote-unquote better players on, on paper. But that's for all the Oli inners to probably argue about later. But if that's the case, if your Oli Gunn Social is your guy and he's clearly not experienced at this high level, 
he's got an inexperienced coaching staff with the exception of maybe um what's his name mike phelan why not get someone in above him to help him to be able to guide where we're going next to be able to add some structure suggest him to bounce our ideas off of why is he left on his own to try and manage this squad that's essentially failed with you know four or five other managers prior and expected to make you know magic out of nothing like why is this a thing and then now what we're going to sell Paul Pogba we're going to put all our hopes on Bruno Fernandes and the same thing is going to happen that happened to Paul Pogba at, at United he's going to be left with Matic and McTominay to feed him the ball which is not good enough. The same way Pogba was expected to be a Ballon d'Or winner playing alongside McTominay, Andres Pereira, right? Or maybe at that time, an inconsistent Fred. And then we're still going to be comparing at that time then. But somebody like a Bruno Fernandes is not going to tolerate it maybe it's the same way that Pogba did because he's essentially, you know, he's at his boyhood club. What are we doing as a football team? Like, really, what are we doing? I don't understand it, man. It's just, none of it makes sense. It really doesn't. And, it's frustrating to watch it gets me so angry but sometimes i just think to myself you know what relax because we're not really gonna go anywhere with this current ownership we never are gonna go anywhere we're never gonna be the team that i grew up on we're never gonna be winning league titles and you know european cups to the level that we were prior or domestic um, trophies even that's not gonna happen a serious club cannot function with the glazers in charge and with somebody like Ed Woodward steering the ship it just doesn't work it doesn't work we've seen it we've seen this experiment run you know what's it seven years post Sir Alex Ferguson and so far we've had really nothing to show for it a couple of cups here and there Europa League win and some quasi high finishes in the Premier League which on paper if you look at how we finished those leagues in the Premier League they weren't that impressive we haven't done anything nothing has really changed but we keep thinking that our new managers can come in and change stuff now that's not to say that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer shouldn't be a nine. I don't think he's good enough for the club. I think he's a terrible coach. I think he's average at best. He'll probably struggle to get another job in the Premier League. So he has to go. But let's not confuse and think that if we get Pochettino in, that suddenly we're going to be title contenders. That's not going to happen. We need a clean sweep. If Solskjaer goes, so must Ed Woodward, so must Matt Judge. And for the most part, the, the Glazers should look to sell the club and get another ownership in place because we're not going to be successful under their stewardship. It's just not going to happen. They don't want to spend money. They're okay with us getting fourth. And the teams around us are getting better. That's not a recipe for us being successful again. So if that's the case, sell up the club, give somebody else that can do it, and get footballing people in so we can get back to being a proper football club. Because at this point, it's just we're just playing game. We're just wasting time. We really are just wasting time. Because even Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I think, let's say you back him and you think he's a good manager. Okay, cool. He needs players. He's clearly shown you if you give him players, he can do pretty well, right? So far, his transfers have been pretty decent. Regardless of who you th think he bought or not, most of his transfers have been all right. Everyone's been basically a 5 to 7 out of 10, which is pretty decent for a hit rate in terms of transfers. With exception of maybe Daniel James, who's really kind of, you know, suffered this season. But for the most part, everyone's done pretty well signing-wise. He's basically proven if you give him his players, he will possibly get you decent finishes. But he requires an open checkbook. He doesn't He doesn't look like he's a manager that can coach a side. He can coach, you know, uh, semi-decent players into better players. He just needs ready-made players, fit them in their formation, give them the good vibes FC, vibe, give them the good, good vibes FC message and send them out there and hope that they win. If that's the case, then give him the players that he needs. And if he can't get the players that he needs, get in the manager who can work under a constricted budget who can work under an ownership that doesn't really want to do great things and let them try and kind of, you know, make a diamond out of shit. Like, do that. But at this moment in time, they're still selling us this dream that we're trying to be united of old and it's a cultural reset. It's a waste of time. We're not obviously doing anything serious. We don't want to be a serious football club. This is all a joke. So now we're out. We're now supposedly in the Europa League. Um, unless what? Uh, unless a crazy thing happens and somehow Istanbul managed to beat PSG by a certain goal amount and we might be in champ. But again, who wants to go through your Champions League on that record after we're losing, what, three games back-to-back -back, and then we suddenly sneak in because another team beat somebody else? It's just like, that's not a recipe for um, success in the next in the next rounds. So I'd rather be out. We're in a Europa League now. Like, it's a waste of competition. I don't give a shit about a Europa League. Um, we've won it already. Cool. We move on. Um, the games are on the Thursday. We're going to play on the weekend on a Saturday. It's just a complete shit show of a situation. 
I'd rather us just play our youth team players, second team players, just get knocked out as soon as possible and just restart. My ideal solution would obviously be, a scenario would be that Sol Shark decides to walk. You know, he decides to pack up his bags and give the keys to somebody else at the club and allow them to maybe have a chance to maybe get a couple of games under their belt um, before the new year. And obviously have the ability to then sign some players in January. But that probably ain't going to happen. The club are going to wait until the very last minute until we can't secure top four football. Um, and then they're going to pull the trigger. And we're going to have the same repeat process again and again. Because I just don't believe one person is going to save us. I think we need a root and branch, do a root stem and branch analysis. We need to take, pull everything out. We need to tear it all down and start again. And until we do that, we're never going to be a serious football club. That's just my opinion. Ugh. Oh. It's annoying, man. It's so, 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 so annoying, honestly. But yeah, what can you do? What can you do? Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. So, what else do we have here? What else do we have here? Oh, we have this great news. Um, thumbs up a man 98 years old is the first person in bristol to get approved of the covid jab of course there's been a lot of conversation around whether or not people should be getting the covid jab right the vaccine um i've stated my position quite clearly on this podcast a few times i've i've had enough of being indoors i've had enough of living under restrictions i've had enough of my freedoms being uh, limited to some extent by this flipping annoying vi virus and i'd much rather get injected with a vaccine no matter what's inside it so i can go back to my regular life now i know i'm giving up some civil liberties i'm probably allowing the um i'm probably kind of um taking part unbelowingly to myself in the great reset um and i'm sure it's something i would i would have been against a couple of years ago but considering where we are in the world and considering just how crappy the west has dealt with covid19 i just don't see any other solution out of this apart from a vaccine we don't seem to be able to collectively um get our heads down and sort of work out a solution you know, or sort of um, stick to a plan that's going to allow us to get back to some civil norm some semblance of normality without a vaccine just look at what they've done in australia right australia they've managed to reopen stuff without having a vaccine because they did the hard work in the beginning which meant not traveling anywhere staying indoors like legitimately going out only from a certain window curfews distancing all this mad stuff that we're meant to be doing but we kind of all don't do right for the most part most of us still go out most of us still go shopping we still go to friends houses it, even if you know they've given us this like christmas grace period to go and meet family and friends but most of us were going to break the rules anyway right so if that's the case and if we're all kind of thinking that way maybe it's because of bad examples of being set with people in the government for cool fair enough let's all do that but let's not be under any illusion we need a vaccine if we don't have a vaccine we're all fucked we need it we need it more than anyone. We need it more than anyone, personally. That's just my opinion, I think, on it. So um, this is a video here um, from The Guardian um, with, obviously, the first person in the UK to get it. Oh, the UK in Bristol, sorry, to get it. Um, a guy that was 98 years old. Let's play this video. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> right. So we're going to give the injection in the top of your arm just here. I thought that's what we came for, dude. That's exactly it. I just didn't want any surprises. Yeah. Um. Talking to old people in the hospital must be so fun, in it, right? They're at the stage in life where they obviously truly don't give a shit. They've got loads of life experience. And for the most part, they're... Um, just fun people to talk to, right? Older people, because they've just seen more shit. Um, they don't take life too seriously. Why would you, right? You're not going to ever meet uh, a social justice warrior that's like 98 years old, right? They've got bigger fish to fry, bigger things to worry about, or they just don't have the time to worry about other people's problems for the most part. So it must be quite fun. All right, yeah. here we go. Is it happening? Oh, yeah. Oh, it wasn't that bad, was it? Oh, lovely. But I tell you what, you've Top made man. history today. You're the first person that we've vaccinated in Bristol. That's, that's much. The first person that we have vaccinated in Bristol. In Bristol? That's you, yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, I'm a big head. <laughs> that's awesome, isn't it? I'm 98. I suppose it's a bit of excitement. But uh, when 
is about somewhere, the doctor said about the other thing, then I thought, yeah. And if uh, t to advertise it as, as anything, but yeah, lovely. And imagine, right? So that's one segment of our population looked after and obviously no one's kind of worried about putting their ground in the hospital but it's mad like i wonder if we're going to look back on this and actually think that maybe we were a bit excessive with the lockdowns in general and how we kind of dealt with stuff because if you look at the kind of you know of course if you look at the mortality you look at the you know the people that are actually passing away from covid they're generally over the age of what 60 70 years old right for the most part and we locked down the entire world for like what less than two percent of the population or maybe le no less than maybe 10 i'd say maybe of the population of the world again no one is i i would i would hate to be the person who decided hey we can fuck off everyone that's old and we just open up the economy because that's a mad decision to make right you'd have some you have some balls made out of flipping adamantium to do that sort of stuff in it but just imagine i just really wondering if whether or not we'll remember this time as like a um as a bit of short-sightedness and maybe panic thinking that we decided to lock down the entire world for a virus that doesn't affect 99.9% .9 of the population. I wonder. But again, regardless of the fact for myself, I'm happy that the vaccine is out there and somebody and most people that are at risk are getting vaccinated so that we can get back to some semblance of normality because I'm sorry, myself, I've had enough of living under these restrictions and I don't want them no more. Continuing on, we have this other um, development too, of courtesy of ITV News. It says the following: V Day marks a huge step towards, um, so a huge step forward in the fight against COVID nineteen. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson says you've got a picture there of Boris Johnson, you know, doing his perfect PR campaign that he's always really good at doing and rubbing elbows of a nurse in the hospital. It says the following, the UK is taking a huge step forward in its fight against COVID-19 as the country's vaccination program gets underway, Boris Johnson has said. The vaccination will be administered at dozens of hospitals, hubs across the country from Tuesday, dubbed V-Day by the Health Secretary, Matt Hancock. They love branding things like this, isn't it? So, so gay. It continues, the Prime Minister said he was immensely proud of the scientists who had developed the new jab and praised NHS staff for working tirelessly to make the vaccine rollout happen. Tuesday marks the start of the NHS's largest ever vaccination program with the UK becoming the first country in the world to start vaccinating people with the uh, Pfizer BioNTech jab. The vaccine has been uh, shown to be 95% effective against COVID-19 and works across all age groups, including the elderly. Among the first people to receive, it will be over 80s care home staff and health care workers with the eventual aim of vaccinating millions of people against the coronavirus. After the initial dose, a second jab must be given 21 days later, which Johnson said today marks a huge step forward for the UK's fight against coronavirus and I can't begin and was we begin delivering the vaccine to the first patients across the whole country. I'm immensely proud of scientists and developed the vaccine, uh, members of the public who took part in the trials and the NHS who has worked tirelessly to prepare the rollout. So of course you're seeing here the breakdown of how they're going to apply it. Um, it says here it continues, but mass vaccination will take time we must remain clear-eyed about the changes that remain. As the program ramps up in the weeks and months ahead, it is as important as ever to keep the COVID winter plan, following the rules in your area, and remember the basics of hand, face, and specs, which is always funny when they say this sort of stuff, isn't it? Oh, by the way, we've got vaccine in place, but please make sure that you abide by the rules. If if the, if this weekend was any, or this past weekend was any indication, especially in London, people have just gone nuts since, you know, the, our kind of... Uh, nationwide lockdown is sort of easy we've got these sort of tiered regional lockdowns in place and if you're on zone if you're basically in tier two you're able to kind of have some semblance of normality most people have just gone out and just gone crazy the you know the, the west london or central london was absolutely in heaving with people places in east all the trendy shops in south and stuff and all areas and the box parks all these things were packed with people on the weekend because people just had enough it, and it's even worse timing because i uh, it's, it's it seems like worse timing or the timing couldn't be worse, especially with the vaccine, because it's giving people a false sense of security. And then, of course, you've got the added benefit. So on top of it being the see, what well, being the the holiday season, people are going to be around family and friends. They're going to be communicating, kissing, hugging, all this sort of shit. So it's only going to make matters worse. So if ever there was a time for us to be more vigilant, vigilant, it will be now. But I doubt it's going to happen. 
it continues some 800,000 so um, I fully expect to be, to for us to be under some level of lockdown again next year if again I don't think it's necessary but if we're following the patterns of the government prior anytime it's a spike they just react with a lockdown they don't have any other solution to kind of quell the cases or maybe it's look at the numbers differently if that's the case if the numbers keep going up the way they've been going up prior weeks especially with more people going out then I, I fully expect us to be in some level of lockdown next year now the devil solution in place which i'm thinking or i'm hopeful of is that the government's going to see especially with the whole like pret a manger city um the city being locked down and it not being able to make any money from the lunchtime economy all that sort of nonsense right from people that go to work there might be a scenario where the government is being put under so much pressure for those people working in the city right who are kind of got their connection with the people in the flipping house of commons or whatever and they might think you know what we don't want to be under pressure. I don't be receiving phone calls at 2 a.m. from these people. Let's get everyone vaccinated. Let's ramp it up, like fast track some people and get just people ramped up. So there might be a thing where certain sectors of the of the country, certain sectors of the economy will be told to go get vaccinated so they can get restarted back to work. I can envision that happen. So there might be a scenario where actually people are just back doing what they're doing next year just because they don't want to lose money they don't want to be put under pressure by these i would say not lobbyists but people that have special interests within what they're doing you know that kind of stuff anyway continues here some eight hundred thousand doses of vaccine have been delivered to the uk hospital hubs enough for four hundred thousand people but it's unclear when more cases or more doses sorry, will arrive for the manufacturer overall the uk has secured 40 million doses for the pfizer vaccine which is roughly for 20 million people gp um, surgeries have been told to prepare for uh, star staffing some gp led vaccination centers from next week with more opening up as stocks of the jab arrive and of course you've seen it there people loading into the specially made freezers for it uh, it says across england 125,000 or 100 120 and 250,000 private care networks have been asked to designate a single practice to administer the vaccines in the area which was capable of delivering a vaccine from 8 a.m to 8 p.m seven days a week and on bank holidays if needed wow they're going all out in it vaccination centers are treating numbers large numbers of patients in sporting venues and conference centers across england will also be mobilized when further supplies come on stream perfect um, health secretary matt hancock said we'll be look we'll look back on today on v-day as a key moment in our fight back against this terrible disease and i'm proud of the health services across the united kingdom are about to embark on our largest ever vaccination program it's interesting that no one ever refers to the covid19 or coronavirus as the chinese virus like trump doesn't it no one's weaponized chinese people no one's made them the other no one's turned them into you know this menace in the far east apart from the americans and or apart from republicans and you know, the conservative whatever it's interesting isn't it especially when you consider the amount of damage it's done to the world economy no one's kind of adopted this sort of like what racist point of view regarding um the origins of the virus which would be interesting to see i guess most world leaders are sensible and they're not you know as maybe um short-sighted or just downright bad people bad person as maybe some of the uh, republicans over there in the states but it's interesting that's the case anyway it continues we have over 80s and the frontline healthcare workers receiving the vaccination for today the whole country will breathe a collective sigh of relief as our most vulnerable loved ones start to be given the protection from the virus now the time is to sit tight and remain protected and remain patient until you get notified by nhs and it's time for your vaccination cool good to know man good to know so v day is kicking off we're gonna all be vaccinated very very soon and we're all gonna be able to live our lives like normal um very very soon as well so i'm looking forward to that man because uh, like i said I've, I've just i've just had enough i've had it up to here i'm i'm at my max you know when you, you know when you have the kettles and you have little lines on the kettles if you go over it and you still boil the water or the water over spills that's me i'm over spilling kettle water right now and i don't want to be that guy anymore <laughs> Anyway, continue to move on. Uh oh, oopsie doopsie. So it looks like Kay Burley, right, one of our premier pres presenters here in the UK, got herself in a bit of an oopsie on her 60th birthday party, right? Birthday parties during COVID have causing so many problems, man. It's been the it's been the scrooge of the elites of the celebrities of the public figures out there in it. This really really fucking them over. So Kay Burley of Sky News decided to go on a bit of a 
bender for her 60th birthday party and unfortunately she happened to break some very basic covid rules now this wouldn't be a big problem with anybody else because again you know I, I'm, I'm quite forgiving with these things even though i hate birthdays myself i could give a shit about my own birthday give a shit about anyone else's birthday but i understand some people really hold birthdays up to a high esteem the ability to celebrate your special day with your close family and friends especially a day with an that ends in an odd number on even number oh people love those shits in it so i get it so 60th birthday young lady doing your thing during a covid year it's your only probably bit of relief and joy for this whole bit of time we're living in but unfortunately when you're Kay burley and you're lambasting politicians and elected officials and other people um on tv about how they deal and how they break the rules and skirt the things and one rule for you one rule for us all this sort of nonsense and then you get caught out doing the exact same thing you got to take that L. You've got to take that L and I would assume and I would say they'll stretch. I would kind of adopt the same Tim Dillon sort of point and mantra. If anybody in public office or if anybody in, you know, a, a public figure of some sort, if they are caught cool, breaking the COVID rules, they should be fired from, from whatever gig they've got. Of course, if you're unfireable and you've got fucking money, then congratulations to you. But if you work a job or if you're an elected politician, you should resign or you should be fired those are the two things because that's the only way people are going to learn and understand that the rules are not different for you than they are from us right as average day civilians because at the moment it looks like if you're rita aura if you're Kay burley you can do whatever you want really under the covid rules and just write a little um i message or sorry iphone notes apology upload on your instagram and then suddenly everyone sort of moved on but if you're general normal resident you're in a gym you're in a restaurant and you open it up against the rules you get fined an incredible amount you get shamed by your local community um you, you know it's just general nonsense that gets kind of you know you get kind of maybe um targeted by the police as we've seen with that guy that owned the gym who was kind of essentially arrested at a protest that he went to i think somewhere in central london it's not a real good place to be if you break the covid rules and you happen to be a civilian but if you're a celebrity you just get to time to kind of step away from the limelight reflect on your actions and then come back that's not on anyway it continues k burley sky news presenter apologies for covid breach um she says sky news presenter k burley has apologized for an error in judgment oh yeah right over the covid rules posting on twitter the journalist said that she had been celebrating her 60th birthday party in a covid compliant restaurant on saturday she later popped into another restaurant very new to use the toilet it's not clear that the rules have been broken for this action so i'm assuming with that one most likely because in the uk you can only actually well, you can only actually get a drink if you're eating something so i guess she went to another venue after the time that you're meant to go home probably ordered another drink with different groups of people outside of a bubble which obviously you're breaking the rules and then decided to go back to her house with the groups of people, friends that she went out with again breaking the rules so she can she continues here she says um um, on saturday night i enjoyed a 60th birthday party with a covid compliant restaurant i'm embarrassed to say that late in the evening i accidentally broke the rules i had been in a taxi i'd been waiting for a taxi at 11 p.m to get home this breath for a loo i briefly popped into another restaurant to spend a penny i can only apologize which is odd really because i think most places close at 11 p.m anyway so i'm not sure where she closed she went somewhere else after 11 maybe that's where the rules are broken again um the bbc has no response for, uh, the, the, says miss burley um has notable absent from her daily talk show daily breakfast show on sky news tuesday morning um sarah houston presented the show instead reports suggest miss burley has joined by a group of colleagues to mark her birthday in london which is under tier two restrictions and so far her colleagues haven't stepped forward these flipping scumbag um li lily what's her spineless friends of hers who are also at this gathering have not stepped forward and confessed and i think one of them might be beth rigby i'm not snitching because that's what people are saying on twitter so relax but i think one of those people might be beth. and it's the case they have to come out and say something especially if you remember how beth rigby was going hard hard she was going hard at the likes of um what's his face um dominic cummings and stuff do you remember that she was absolutely tearing into him uh, you know um quite rightly so but she has to hold this l as well you can't just let k burley just get you know get hit with this on her own it continues this means a lot of people are allowed to socialize this means that people are not allowed to socialize with anyone from outside their household or support bubbles indoors either in a private home or a public place which you know she obviously break the rules that way some venues have outdoor seating and you can able to sit with a group um up to six people outside including a garden or a public space she said 
Continues. Brexington reports a spokesman for Sky told BBC we place the highest importance on complying with the government guidelines on the COVID and we expect all our people to comply too. Um, we were disappointed to learn of a small number of Sky News staff may have engaged in activity breached these guidelines. Although this took place at a social event in a personal time, we expect all our people to follow the rules. He added that an internal process is underway to review the conduct of the people involved. Okay, cool. So they're definitely going to get everyone's going to get called out that way. Miss Burley was has grilled politicians throughout the pandemic and it makes you question Michael Gove about Dominic Cummings' controversial lockdown trip to the uh, Barnard Castle. Of course, you guys know anyway. You went on the drive to test his eyes, and he her, her apology comes after pop star Rita Ora said sorry for breaching COVID nineteen restrictions after failing to self isolate after a trip to Egypt. That Rita Ora story was weird as well. Who in Egypt with money is paying Rita Ora to fly private to come and sing in your living room? Like really, of all the pop, because imagine this is an odd time, right? I think it's one of the strangest times because it's also it's one of the strangest times because I guess it kind of disproportionately affects people that are poor, but it also disproportionately benefits people that are rich. Because I'm thinking, if you've got money, right, and you want to see somebody perform live in your bedroom, on your living room, whatever, in your flipping, you know, garden that looks like the size of Wembley, this is one of your opportune moments to do so because everyone's at home and broke for the most part right most entertainers don't have a revenue stream that is of the level that it would be when they're touring and performing in general right when the world is open so if that's the case you have the ability to potentially book whoever you want for quite possibly a cut rate price right everyone will probably be willing to take half of whatever they charge when they do an appearance just because it's cash in the bank especially if you're willing to pay for their travel and their stay all that good stuff right it's still money in a bank from all these months of being able to of not being able to earn a penny so to go through your rolodex of pop stars of people you want to come and sing again i'm not a fan of all these pop random corny people that make music that they only play on speakers and top shop but in, if you get through all those people and to select rita aura as your one to come and play your living room you must be a big fan of rita aura because she is terrible like again a great girl i think i've met her maybe a couple times um back in the day for some styling thing fashion stuff whatever back in the day um she seems like a nice person she seems to have like a good set of friends around her which is shouldn't mean anything but for most pop stars if you ever met them they seem to have like a really weird group of hanger-ons around there but she seems to have good people around her good head on her shoulders all that good stuff but musically god damn mate i'd rather legitimately run into a wall with a spoon in my hand let that jam inside my eyeball twist it and then you know trip myself over i have my face bang onto the cement roll over into a pile of dog crap then listen to her music it's terrible so imagine doing that during the covid times so again maybe unless you're getting her to sing rihanna covers or something which would be a par imagine that you're getting booked to play in the living room of some you know egyptian billionaire right and then he's getting you to do covers of stuff that he likes from other people that aren't you like yikes but anyway regardless um big up uh <laughs> everyone for i guess what i wonder if k belly knew she was going to get caught out and she got in front of it i'm sure she did right i'm sure somebody from the daily mail or some pap got her sneaking into another restaurant um or maybe disgustingly got her taking the someone you know one of those trash paparazzis maybe snapped a picture of her in a loo or something like I'm, i wonder because she came out very quickly and kind of put um the kaput on that story but hey um there we go k burley is um i guess on leave at the moment it looks like she's not going to come back until maybe next year so i've heard um via the timeline according to a couple of insiders but again you know no love lost there in it if you call other people's out other people have to call you out it is what it is the game is the game but she should be fired. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, this is another article here from Sky News. It says that face masks are supposed to be going to be needed until late 2021. And this is from a guy called Valence. Of course, that's one of the, I think, the advisors of Sage, who's kind of advising the government on COVID responses. And this shouldn't be no surprise to most people, I think. I'd just like to reiterate this sort of stuff on the podcast because I think a lot of people are still living in cuckoo land, are still a bit optimistic, are still a bit naively optimistic about how soon we're going to get back to living our regular scheduled life. And it's not going to be for a while. So um, you're definitely going to have to be living with some level of restrictions or underneath some level of care until things get back to that level. So this is Sky News. Um, it says here, face mask may be needed until late 2021. The government... Oops, okay. 
that doesn't do keep you know the government's uh, special, chief scientific advisor has urged Britain to continue to adhere to social distancing guidelines um, so Patrick Valance who also held the beginning of the vaccine rollout as a tremendous day but added things will not start returning to normal in the UK until the spring of next year like god almighty he added the face mask could still be needed until late 2021 so patrick told sky news it takes time for the immune system to kick in after the vaccine and said it can take a month or longer before a person has fully immunity he said it's important that we all stick to the rules the rules are what's keeping us and the virus down we need to keep the virus down while we allow the program the vaccine program to roll out it may be uh, that next winter even the vaccination we need measures like mask in place we don't yet know how good all the vaccines are going to be at preventing the transmission of the virus um so patrick valence has him there um continues to say it's going to take a long time to make sure everybody at risk groups and all the groups are difficult so it's going to take it's going to take quite a long time to make sure everybody um in the at-risk groups and all of the groups that are difficult to reach get vaccinated as appropriate when asked about when life might return to how it was before the pandemic so patrick valance said it's very important that we understand this is the start of something it's going to take some time to get the vaccine out widely uh widely sorry i would anticipate that if the vaccines arrive and if the astrazeneca vaccine gets approved that you could start seeing enough people having been vaccinated in spring sometime to start saying yes this is returning towards normal so it's still going towards that same um um a same assumption assumption what's that thing same prediction um as prior that i was saying before on the podcast where most likely earliest will be the end of summer but then most likely normal normal as in whatever you are doing december 2019 you're going to be able to do that again from probably december 2022 that's what you know that's that's or not from but December 2022 probably be you know the start of 2022 probably be when everything will be back to normal for sure um you'll probably see people will be taking removing you know distant stickers off the floor maybe not so much use of those kind of plastic little sheets around the self-checkout sections a bit that's when you see that stuff get taken down um it'll be quite fun as well people will be having like you know covid bonfire parties right where they sort of like you know light things up and just throw them all in a huge heap and burn them and mark the end of this crazy odd chapter he says but continues says but when it becomes um quali- completely normal and completely normal across the world is going to take longer he said so i would expect sort of springtime april something like that you start to see more return towards normality and thereafter it's going to take a while before we get back to normality so again if he's saying april i'm going to say june if he's saying june i'm going to say august it's always going to push it a couple of months especially this is not accountable for huge spikes in cases here and there so um that can always change the five vaccines being rolled out by shabaka but you know you know the rest here but so yeah interesting development there so if you were thinking of oh we're going to go back to normal if it's going to be like was before relax chill out still put your mask on we don't need to you know unnecessarily cause ourselves any issues let's just kind of get the cases down as best we can and then we can progress from there next on the dockets so yeah i'm okay with it man i'm fine i'm fine with life taking a bit longer to get back to some level of normality i'm definitely definitely okay with it um i don't need to rush back into um normal scheduled programming i don't think i'm okay i don't know about you guys but i'm really i'm okay with it like um as long as it takes as long as it takes we're already you know a year in already anyway there's no point in rushing it and then having to lock because that's the that's the honestly the the um the nightmare scenario because i think people are not really thinking about this like if if every country in the west has only really done the whole lockdown thing apart from maybe sweden and some other places who have done the sort of like herd immunity sort of idea where you sort of just let people live their lives and keep distance and not do any kind of mass lockdowns but for the most part anything that's really worked in the west has been you know mass lockdowns at some level and if that's the only response governments seem to have to adequately dealing with covid if cases spike even with a vaccine the first thing they're going to do is lock us all down again so I'm more willing to take our time reopening everything up, whether it means economies have to flip and crash in, in the process, it is what it is, then having to open and then having to close down again, because that will essentially, you know, that could cause some, it's already, we're already at a stage where the damage done is irreparable for some people, right? People are not going to, some people are just not going to come back from this. This is the thing that no one wants to really talk about openly, but some people are just not going to come back. Some people are just like, you know whatever's happened to them during covid has happened and that's it it's a wrap for you and it? it's over um life-wise it's done 
Um, so I can only imagine what another one, like another sort of, you know, the same as like March times happening again. Oh. And then maybe something happens with the vaccine that's trying to get approved. Oh, yeah. Let's not hope for that. Let's hope for good things. But hey, let's just be aware that that could also happen. Next on the list, we have some really weird news, right? I guess from the world of boxing, Floyd Medweather and Logan Paul have confirmed that they're going to be fighting an exhibition fight for some reason um, on pay-per-view, I guess maybe going off the success of the Mike Tyson and Roy Jones and then of course the Jake Paul and Nate Robertson uh, prior and of course before that the original fight which was against Logan Paul and KSI that he, I think he lost both fights, right? Or one was a draw ever. So there's obviously an appeal for these um sort of celebrity exhibition boxing matches where a very prominent public figure goes against somebody that's very skilled in you know in maybe the art of fighting whether it's martial arts whether it's boxing in general whatever it may be but then there seems to be a progression and an evolution of this where they want an actual professional boxer somebody that is a you know multi-champion who's got a 50 and 0 record to go into a ring against uh, essentially what is a YouTuber yes Logan Paul has experience in fighting he's obviously got some uh, uh, collegiate wrestling experience he's obviously been boxing at a very high no at a very serious level for a very prolonged period of time but let's make no mistake like he has no business being in a ring with somebody like Floyd Mayweather and we saw what happened against Conor McGregor Conor McGregor was at the time maybe one of the most dangerous MMA fighters of his weight class, somebody who a lot of people thought generally might have a chance against Floyd Redman. No, not a lot of people, maybe only Brendan Schaub, but there were some people who still thought, you know, he's got a fighter's chance, right? He is a match, he is a long time martial artist. Yes, it's the sweet science of boxing, but if you're able to strike the way that Conor McGregor is able to strike, there is an understanding that there might be a possibility where you can maybe give Floyd over an issue. And of course, you also have to remember, I'm pretty sure Conor McGregor was like a Golden Gloves champion, right? He has some sort of amateur boxing experience, so he doesn't have no base. But for somebody like a Logan Paul to decide to start boxing at what, age 24 or whatever old he is, and then to start and then to think that level of experience is going to be any sort of competition for somebody like a Floyd Mayweather is absolutely insane. Um, now, again, of course, the money involved, I'm sure, makes everything makes sense for some people because there are that there is that group of fighters, I guess, that exist out there who just fight for the money right they don't really fight for the legacy or for the trophies or for whatever it may be cool that's all makes sense but surely this does nothing for either of them if forever gets in and sparks out logan paul in the first round nothing happens nothing changes if logan paul somehow manages to win no one takes this seriously because it's an exhibition fight and again it makes flow River look bad and it probably reflects poorly on the sport of boxing but either way, there's no real big winners of this. It doesn't really do anything. Like we know that maybe was training someone, if someone trained long enough, you could probably, um, you could probably not embarrass yourself in a ring against somebody decent. But to go against somebody like a Floyd wherever in boxing, it's just, again, I don't know, maybe again, it's because I've been humbled in uh in a in a martial arts gym right again muay thai group on one month and a half right and i know what it's like to fight somebody that actually knows what they're doing i can only imagine what the gap in skill level is from somebody like myself and a floyd but just it just must be the scary it must be scary it must be legitimately scary getting in the room with somebody like that and before you even put your hands up he's hit you four times like just imagine <laughs> So credit to Logan Paul for even taking the fight in the first place. This is from Sky News. It says, Floyd Mayweather v. Logan Paul Boxing. Great to come out of retirement to fight YouTube star. Um, it says, the following undefeated boxing great Floyd Mayweather is to come out of retirement to fight YouTube star Logan Paul. The fight is being touted as an exhibition and will take place on the 20th of February next year. Now, of course, they keep saying exhibition, but we know, you know, most fight fans are going to take this seriously. If... Floyd Mayweather does lose because he's such a hated and divisive figure in the sport of boxing. People are definitely going to put that against his record and he'll be 50 and 1. So let's not, you know, use that as an excuse. It promises to be another lucrative deal for the Money Mayweather as well as Paul, who's more than two who has more than 22 million YouTube subscribers. Now, supposedly I've heard through the grapevine 
that they're both getting a hundred million dollars each supposedly um i think flow is getting a hundred million dollars guaranteed and then logan paul's is split but regardless that is supposed to be the person they're looking at which is maddening um both men have tweeted an image of the pay-per-view fight which will be broadcast exclusively on a platform called fan Mio, which i've never even heard of right? i don't know what fan Mio is um should i look up what, what is a fan Mio? will it give me a what is a fan Mio? no results found yeah it doesn't matter um i guess it's some sort of streaming site but it's weird that trailer's not doing it that did the fight previously with jake paul um and of course mike tyson and roy jones i wonder why that's not the case um and i wonder why what why didn't someone like an only fans um decide to maybe stream this fight it would have been perfect for only fans right if only fans are trying to pivot away again this is if if only fans are trying to pivot away from the idea that they're just a platform for sex workers and prostitutes what a best what a better way to do so than to have the first marquee fight be mayweather viva logan paul exclusively on only fans and then maybe use that as opportunity to maybe build and do other sort of exhibition -y type fights and stuff right competitions and tennis matches and shit i don't know whatever right the greats i'm sure there's a market for people watching i'm sure there's a market for people who want to watch you know their favorite athlete you know compete again at whatever level it is whether it's michael johnson racing against somebody in a 200 meters or you know john McEnroe facing someone in the exhibition tennis match it must exist so why not do that on only fans i wonder why they didn't do that i wonder anyway it continues uh mayweather is considered one of the best pound for pound boxers ever and has been tempted out of retirement several times before he famously beat ufc star michael uh, mcclellan in 2017 which stretched his pro boxing record to 50 fights and reportedly banked him several hundred million dollars now supposedly what i've heard again through the forums and the reddits is that the plan always was to re to kind of rematch conor mcgregor now conor mcgregor's camp actually believe that they can beat Floyd Mayweather. If you watch the first few fights or the first few rounds of the original fight, there was an understanding that Conor was getting the best of Floyd. Now Floyd post fight was saying he purposely went easy on Conor because he wanted to make it more of an exhibition and more of a fight. And then when he started to ramp it up, that's when he was kind of feeling himself and we just wanted to kind of you know end the fight and he did with the TKO, which is it which is interesting because, you know, flow of really rarely knocks out people in general so for him to knock out somebody like a or to tko somebody like a conor mcgregor just showed what the gaps in like levels of skill were but conor mcgregor's team maintained that if he rematches him he could beat him because the amount of training that he did just to get to that level wasn't that much if he's give he's been you know it's been what four, four years 18 19 20 three years or so maybe or four years going on this if they fight next year so there's not there's kind of a, a feeling in his camp that if he rematches um, Floyd, he could potentially beat him. So the plan in place was always for Floyd to fight one of these YouTubers. They've been calling him out for ages. Remember, he put that tweet out about these girls need to stop talking about me. And then for the other fight on the other side of that was to be against Conor McGregor, which would be wild. Because when Jake Paul and stuff are calling out Conor McGregor, that's that's ridiculous, right? Especially if it's in a UFC octagon. That's an, you know, an octagon in the UFC. It's just, that shouldn't be happening. But a boxing fight, you know, hey it continues the 43 year old also for an exhibition against oh yeah kickboxer tenshin nukazawa on new year's eve in 2018 yeah that was brutal wasn't it um the fight ended inside one round after the hapless nukazawa was knocked down three times um it, you could you, he said um he could face a awkward a few awkward moments against the 25 year old doe despite not having skill anywhere near mayweather he's around five inches taller and naturally much heavier but again do people not understand that if floyd mayweather who's tiny right if Floyd River was a fight a bouncer at your local nightclub he'd probably beat them all up right if there's like five of them on the door he'd probably beat them all up unless one of them grabbed them and kind of grabbed them and sat on his chest or something he'd probably beat all five of those bouncers up at a nightclub so why do people think because somebody's bigger with less skill is gonna win it's a really strange analogy i've been seeing again it's the same sort of thing i heard when he was about to face connor oh connor's long connor's got awkward angles all this sort of stuff it's like yeah and this guy's been boxing since sort of the age of five years old like that ring is his back garden do you know what i mean like he knows it, everything uh, i don't know again i just i guess you got to stay with the fight in it it is what it is um and again didn't logan lose to ksi and KSI is what? How skilled is KSI, KSI compared to Conor McGregor? 
Like, mamma mia. Um, Paul's boxing experience comes from two fights against British YouTuber KSI. The first fight matches in 2018 ended with a majority draw, but he lost the last year's rematch on points. The decision to proceed with what appears to be a gigantic mismatch had been prompted by Mike Tyson's recent exhibition with Roy Jones, which proved a big success on pay-per-view. For Paul, the event marks another significant turnaround of the pariah he was briefly in 2018 after being shown a body of suicide victim in a YouTube video. Yeah, of course, for him it's a big, it's like an, obviously a, a, an amazing arc for himself, right? He's gone on his whole redemption tour. He's really kind of changed his life. Um, the podcast he does with his friends is really good. If you watch a couple of the guests, if you watch a couple of the... Sh interviews that he does with guests that you like he does come across really well um great balance of his friends of course the boxing stuff he's been doing over the last few years has been pretty insane to see how much he's improved fight on fight but let's be under no no illusions man this fight against floyd Romero is like a bad bad idea a very very bad idea but again you only live once in it so let these guys do their thing and then of course uncle dana Dana White, um, president of the USC, had to chime in and he said the following concerning the fight. He said, when people ask me what the state of boxing is right now, that's where it's at. Didn't that kid get beat up by a fucking video game kid from England and now he's going to fight Floyd Weaver? Question mark. And he says that too, um, which is funny. He's kind of, you know, taking scoffing at the fact that Floyd is fighting um, a person like a Logan Paul. And then look at who he's commenting that fight like he's commentating on the ludicrous the ludicrous nature of that fight to the fucking Nelk boys right a youtube prank channel that that is basically the state of fighting in general that's a state of marketing that's a state of everything it's just absolutely bizarre right the Nelk boys have now become the quasi Nick the Nelk boys and barstool sports have become the fox news platforms for the ufc right in terms of providing them with positive press Right? They're the only platforms that won't kind of push back on Data White in terms of the fire paying, this sort of malarkey and how he kind of conducts himself as a president. Uh, and they kind of, you know, give some positive spin on how they conduct their business. But they also use it as a way to maybe promote and big up some of those cards that they are going to put on later on in the year. So it's all nonsense. It's all crazy. It all doesn't make any sense. But hey, um, February coming very, very soon. Again, if you're going to bet on it, bet on it, lose your money for nothing. But, you know, there's no way in the hell logan paul wins that fight of course fighters chance he's got two hands he's got two feet it could change but you know that's gonna be an absolute um shocker of a fight but you know again you only live once in it so why not give it a go why not give it a go i was mentioning earlier so it appears like apple have announced secretly without letting anybody know out of the blue the introduction of their new apple airpods max and quite honestly they look quite hideous they look like quite possibly the worst headphones on the market especially for the price point that they are trying to you know sell them to us punters now there's of course loads of competition out there for wireless over-the-ear headphones so for apple to come out with a product that looks the way it does um, for the price point that they're putting out there really beggars belief but again the one thing i do know about apple fanboys myself included all it takes is one mkhd mkhbhd whatever um review and we're all going to be queuing up to buy these things very very soon but so far it doesn't really pass the eye test for me um, so this is an article a press release here from apple it says apple today announced airpod max um an innovative Ooh, like an, an innovative wireless headphone that bring the magic of the airpods to an over over the ear design with a high fidelity sound the airpod max combine a custom acoustic design h1 chips and an advanced software to power computational audio from a breakthrough listening experience with the adaptive eq active noise cancellation transparency mode and spatial audio airpods max come in five gorgeous colors including space gray silver sky blue green pink and are available uh, or starting to order today with availability beginning uh, tuesday december 15th now off the bat i respect them for deciding to go for all colors except for black right because most headphones out there my ones included the hein hein hindsight hein Sennheiser hd 25 is my voice um they're all coming black right most headphones most headphones on the market mostly come in some sort of variation of a dark color so for them to go for everything apart from dark colors with the with the maybe exclusion of what's the darkest color they got here yeah a green 
that's a pretty um ad, that's a pretty that's a pretty cool thing to see and i'm assuming most of it has to do with the it with your headphones maybe matching your iphone or your laptop case whatever it may be it continues airpods are the most popular headphones in the world beloved by the effortless setup incredible sound quality and incredible design with airpod air max um air max airpods airpods max we are bringing that magical airpod experience to the stunning over the ear design with high fidelity audio says greg giles like apple senior vice president of worldwide marketing the custom acoustic design combined with the powerful h1 chips and advanced software um enable airpod max to use the computational audio to wirelessly deliver the ultimate personal listening experience now look wise i wonder if this might have been one of the last johnny ive um designed products to be made before he left apple because it does kind of strike me as something that he would put together right um but just aesthetically as a look the best thing i love about them is maybe this little hinge here right this little silver stainless steel hinge is the best thing i love about them but those cups look so big they remind me of like a mouse right the old like apple mouse and the headband is ugly as hell. Like, I just don't like anything about these headphones whatsoever, man. It comes in black here. And of course, you got the sky blue, the pink, uh, and the green. But Jesus, they look so terrible. I guess in some respect, in some respects, if you could, if you want to, depending on how they put them together, you probably could maybe snap different pods, different uh, um uh cups on different bands maybe maybe that's a be a thing but oh, not a fan at all um custom acoustic design it says here from the canopy of the ear cushions every part of the airpod max is carefully crafted to provide exceptional acoustic performance for um each user the breathable knit mesh canopy spanning the headband is made to distribute um, weight and reduce on head pressure. The stainless steel headband frame provides strength, flexibility and comfort for a wide variety of head shapes and sizes. Telescoping headband arms are smoothly extended to stay in place. Each ear cup attaches to the headband through a revolutionary mechanism. Okay, cool. That balances the distribution each ear pressures. Um, and allows it to independently pivot to rotate uh, the fit and unique contours of the user's head. Oh, nice. Each ear cushion uses acoustically engineered memory foam to create an effective seal. Okay. Oh, man, this keeps doing that moving. I've got this bug in to get off my thing. So let's change that again. Apologies. Go back to it again. Boom. Um, each ear cup. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, cool. So again, just look wise. We know what, you know, don't need to read out all the stats, but just in terms of look. I'm not a fan personally. Um, again, the price retail is like 500 or something, right? Look how big they look. They look absolutely so R-worded. Like they look horrendous as headphones. Again, maybe it's the first iteration, right? Apple always do this. I think the first Apple Watch wasn't the best looking thing. Didn't have the greatest of features. The battery time wasn't the best. You had to use it with your phone. And then as they sort of iterated, you know, different versions, um, obviously listened to some of the complaints from customers, changed some things around. It's now become one of the best smart watches out there available. So there probably is an opportunity for them to maybe do that later on. I'm sure they'll probably come with another item with a different price point. But there was, um, I forgot who said it recently. Someone said on Twitter about maybe this is a bit of a mistake that they made such an ugly headphone and put it at such high price that it's essentially going to turn people off from ever buying headphones at all. When if they maybe would have come in with a, this is not really Apple's way of doing stuff. If they maybe would have come in at a price point that was a sort of middle ground between this $500 price range they had at the moment, they could have maybe attracted more customers just to kind of test them out for the sake of being Apple fanboys. Because this is definitely a pair of headsets that you're going to have to, there's going to be a, a segment of people that are going to just buy it straight up but it's going to be a lot of people that are going to wait until the reviews come out and for the most for the most from what i've seen online so i did my research for my headphones if they, i don't think there's a big i don't think there's a more pickier group of techno um a group of tech gadget fans that exist out there than audio files like they are insane with the level of detail they go into with the reviews they really dissect products and take them apart in every way possible when they're putting up their reviews so if these headphones don't come up to scratch they will let the world know about them so this might serve as a real bad way to introduce something at such a high level at such a high price point especially a new item um, especially yeah brand new item in that as well and then you've got this really odd 
the carrying case that you're meant to be using that reminds me a little bit of just a the Blenchyaga pre four collection recently, they had these bags where they're sort of made out of trainers. Maybe that's sort of one of the inspirations. I don't know, but regardless, they are terrible. Um, it says here the AirPod start was it the iPad Max? Oh my goodness, the iPad Max available um to order starting today from five forty nine from Apple UK of course, and the store from one twenty five countries. Jesus Christ, five hundred and forty nine pounds. That is just one of the most insane prices I've seen for an entry level or for the first entry level, um, you know, over the head earphones from Apple. Especially when you consider you could probably get a pretty decent pair for around what, 200 to 300 pounds from various different brands out there, from Bose to Sony, who are the two of the maybe leading um, Bluetooth headphone brands out there at the moment, or wireless headphone brands out there at the moment. Um, of course, people like Pioneer, Sennheiser, III have got a great pair of headphones you could use. Again, that that mechanism here, that silver stainless steel sort of frame thing is the best thing about it. Like that looks beautiful, that mechanism um, design wise. But God almighty, they look awful. They look like the kind of headphones you wear at gun range. Like they look insanely, insanely, so unnecessarily big. A digital crown that lets you precisely control your volume or skip tracks. Like, okay, I guess so. Sounds like an epiphany. Again, it probably would have they probably would have gone away a long way to kind of get people to buy these if they would have just sent out a couple of review pairs, you know, to the usual people. Yeah, you know, MK, BHD, maybe Casey Neistat, a few other people, right? Just kind of some lifestyle heads, just to kind of you know mix it up a little bit. Because God Almighty is a bad. I can't wait to see who the first DJ is to wear these behind the booth as well. Because you know someone's going to do that. Someone's going to be different and plug them into their flipping mixer. But oh my God, man. They just look so horrible. I'm not a fan of these at all. Not for me, thank you. 20 hours of battery life isn't that decent. Either, either, either. Isn't that great either, is it? But hey, what do I know? Let me know your thoughts, man. Are you going to get a pair of the app, Apple AirPod Max? I keep calling it Apple AirPod Air Max, AirPod, Apple AirPods Max, AirPod Max, AirPod Max, AirPod Max, AirPod Max. Will you get a pair yourself? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts regarding it. Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's end on one because I don't want to waste too much more of your time here. Oops. Need to close that one. Sorry about that. Um, random noise that appeared there. So, just to end this, I don't want to continue on too long. I've already wasted a bit more of your time. It looks like there's been a, there's a bit of a beef brewing within the DJing community as per usual. It seems like this year has been the year for DJ beefs, right? Whether it's people, whether it's customers or punters, um, you know, calling out DJs for playing Plague Raves, other DJs calling out other DJs for playing Plague Raves, people for doing ghost productions, loads of other nonsense happening in the scene. But it feels like in a year where everyone's had their booking and earning potential drastically um, slashed due to COVID, everyone's sort of like picking and throwing stones at their fellow colleagues and peers, some of which are doing maybe slightly better than they are in an act of maybe diverting attention away from their pain and their hole and their heart and generally just for a bit of fun in it because I think most people especially when they're bored especially when they've got money in the bank and they don't really have any obligations they just sit around their home and just think you know what let me pick a fight cause a bit of drama get my blood pressure running and get a bit of fun in my life and this is exactly what someone like Daniel Wang did today he decided for some unbeknownst reason I don't know why he decided to use this as a time to air out his dirty laundry with Peggy Goo but he decided to make a complete he decided to write this essay story time thing on his facebook detailing a very traumatic experience he had with peggy goo also known as suge knight right um the way he describes peggy goo in this account of the running he's had with her over the years he honestly makes her sound like an absolute dragon right like um cersei in flipping game of thrones now don't get me wrong Am I Peggy Goo's biggest fan? Probably not, as a person, right? Musically wise, I think she's got some great productions. It's probably up in the air if not she, she actually does them herself, especially when you read some of the comments that people have been putting out there. But regardless, she seems like a girl who has essentially gamed the system to some level, especially if you read the backstory about having rich parents that afforded her luxury to essentially intern in Berlin for what, five years or so and work on her artistic practice, which then led to, you know, her becoming the represent the, the 
new female representation that they seem to have in the scene every three or four years um the big labels and agencies and all these people seem to pick somebody out of the aretha and prop them up as a sort of token representation for the scene overall that is grossly misrepresenting um different backgrounds color creeds and genders anywhere as it is so again most of that stuff isn't really her fault it's not her fault apparently with rich it's not her fault she had good connections it's not her fault the industry picked her to be the next global big star in djing all those things aren't her fault but i guess it does go there is some fault to be laid at her feet for being somebody that generally a lot of people don't have a lot of good things to say about personally as a human people don't really skip a moment to shit on her to kind of kick her on your head you know to kind of say some snide things and whatever it may be and usually from my experience from looking from the outside in with these people right there's usually always truth to it now it doesn't always mean everything everyone's saying is right but if everybody is going out of their way to shit on you and to you know not go out of their way to defend you when you're being harassed online um when you're being spoken about you know in a negative fashion when the facts of the story are being purposely misconstrued to make you look bad when no one's stepping out and saying hey i vouch for this person they're my friend bloody blah 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 there's usually a reason behind it it's usually because guess what you're a shitty person behind the scenes and that's what basically has happened now the story time with daniel wang it seems like it's information that we don't need to know because i think most discerning fans of dance music were not surprised to learn that peggy goo might be a bit of an entitled c-u-n-t right well you'll kind of guess that it is what it is but there's also something to be said for most djs at her level at her level of fame and notoriety are c-u-n-t's most of them and we've basically seen them illustrate this over the last few years right from dj beef drama to lockdown raves to plague raves to ghost producers to mean comments online we see various accounts and you know djs complaining about plain um connections and not being able to get business car seats we've seen djs really go out of their way to show us how disconnected they are from regular life how sheltered they are how pampered and entitled their experience are is living you know on airplanes and playing in front of thousands of people and getting paid you know obscene amounts of money to go play most djs are up there and us most people DJs are entitled so this story really doesn't make any sense to share it with us but regardless we're going to read through it and pick out some of the more elo bits and of course leave a comment on the other side now of course with, with myself this is the post as well with daniel wang i actually was made um aware of daniel wang a few years ago and he was actually the person who put me onto cocktail de amour the legendary club night at the formerly at the now gone R um, Grease Mueller, right the original one r.i.p he read this article for electronic beats back in the day i think it might have been 2015 called dj and journalist, sorry, or no, DJ journalist Danny Wang explains the appeal of a wild cocktail de amour party. It's a really, really great essay, right? He details essentially the entire history of cocktail de amour, uh, the people behind it, some of the legends that have kind of played at it, the vibe, the ethos, loads of really cool things that he kind of explained in this really detailed, amazing essay that essentially got me to go to Greece Mula the first time, maybe what, 2015, late 2015, maybe winter, December around that time so i've actually got a big um space in my heart for daniel wang himself right and he also was responsible for producing the track um uh if you're looking for some action why not pay me for just i don't know what the song is from like 11 years ago um I think it's called like some dream like some dream something like that right it's a really great disco track so again somebody that i kind of really rate as a dj and obviously somebody i really rate in terms of how they kind of navigate the scene and their perspective and stuff just in general you look a cool dude so to see him essentially go on this weird tirade against peggy goo essentially arguing about really expensive furniture really kind of bummed me out man because I, I like daniel wang and this is, seems like a really cucky thing to do but again let's read it so Danny Wang says the following this strange year is coming to an end it's on Facebook I'll link it in the show notes if you guys read it yourself this year is coming to an end and two uh, and the two best things to happen in 2019 are Donald Trump or 2020 Donald Trump is getting voted out of the White House and Peggy Key moved out of my building now he started off his statement his story time comparing Donald Trump to Peggy Goo now Peggy Goo might be a lot of things entitled spoiled average dj sinister social climber more of an influence than a dj blah 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 let's all label people right but is she donald trump 
because she gets paid a lot of money to DJ for Nike at a boiling party somewhere? Is she Donald Trump because she might have maybe got fast forward her DJ career quicker than maybe that she has skill level maybe her would assume? Is she a is she Donald Trump because she comes from a privileged family? Like really, Donald Trump. This man is insane, bro. He's smoking mad stuff. And he says, no, this is not a joke. He says, I'm finally going public and not on the DJ page for only 50 people to read, which I don't know what he's trying to say there. Um, maybe other people read, I don't know, whatever. Let's continue. I've written this on my computer over and over and in my head for two to three years more. And I need to do this for my own mental health. Sorry, but I need to say this at last. Now, at this moment, I generally was scanning through the text, hoping to find some really crazy thing that Pegu did I don't know she slit his cat throat she left the flipping head of a moose on his bed she stabbed him in the eye um she ran off with you know 50 grand or something I don't know I was, I was looking for some really heavy shit because when you start off your you know story time with this is something I've been wanting to write over and over on my computer for two to three years something you've been holding on to pain and suffering i'm really expecting some heavy hitting shit now when we continue it you'll be like oh my god this man's insane it continues like a poor dolphin with a mental with a metal spike stuck in his fin i've been traumatized by knowing this awful human being she was my again i, I don't know if this is a troll or if this is like an in joke between the both of them and they're just kind of trolling all of us in public because this is maddening she was my neighbor and she moved out three months ago some parts of the world think she's a talented attractive fashionable dj okay this is the biggest, saddest marketing scam ever. Like every other person, right? Every Everyone has a marketing scam in order to prop up their career. If you're trying to make it in the arts just on your talent alone, let me just tell you this now, you're going to fail. You need a marketing scam. You need a crux. You need something to lean on. You need an avatar. You need something to in order to differentiate you from everyone else that exists out there, especially in the DJing world. Anyone and their mum can DJ. Anyone can mix two records together. It's not difficult to do. In order to separate yourself, you need a marketing scam. And most DJs on these top 100 lists have exquisite marketing scams, right? Whether it's a story about them working at some legendary record store, whether it's a story about them uh, being a PA, whether it's a story about them being a festival kid, everyone's got these fantasy stories that they kind of make up in their heads or with their marketing teams or with their managers in order to basically propagate and prop up this message or this idea of what they are when it's not really them everyone does this this is not new like relax um lots of us in berlin know the truth but not one had the guts or the authority to speak up like oh my god who is she bro it's peggy goo it's not fucking ostergut right it's not like, it's relax <laughs> they're afraid people will call them racist sexist and bitter or jealous now that might be true uh, but again this is nonsense i finally found the courage to say this today and lord knows i'm having nothing against asians and nor do i have anything against women okay we'd hope not because you are asian yourself isn't he i'm sure i have have nothing against uh i have nothing to be bitter about because i have 20 years of joyful dj career behind me already that i think is a lie i think if you're going to call somebody out because again we'll have to kind of own our shit because i think a lot of people on social are getting a bit oh he she he's being what's that what is someone saying he's um he's um he's opening the gates to of to misogynistic abuse that's not his problem if he has a personal uh experience with peggy Gu and it's bad he's allowed to speak about it openly we're allowed to mock him for crying about a, a, a chair online right and not just sending an email or a message uh, privately but he's allowed to talk about his experience now <laughs> the fact that he's saying there's nothing to bitter about is a lie because if you have something if you're gonna call somebody out publicly you're definitely bitter in some way in shape or form it just is what it is like just own your shit like just because you've had a 20-year dj and create doesn't mean you can't be jealous of somebody that's been in the industry for 10 you can be jealous of her like it, it's gonna be a thing and you and you're allowed to be jealous of her too because she might have some bits of success that you might want to have now what you do with that jealousy is something different right of course you know but jealousy is a normal emotion that's not a bad thing now he's trying to make it seem as if like he's coming from this high and mighty place like come on daniel wang and this is not about musical taste or talent yes it is you can play the most stupid grunge rock or the techno trance and you can be a chopping and you can be a chopping genius but whatever it is if you don't do it if you do it for fun and friendship then i'd never have any fault to find of it 
lies. He says it's the most bizarre coincidence in the world that Peggy Goon and Daniel Wang lived for three and a half years separate. Why are you talking about so, 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 so a third person? Separate by one floor. Before or after she became very famous, I truly wish I never got stuck in a situation. It's time to tell the truth. Again, he's not he's, not, he's still rambling. It's time to tell the truth while the land while the landlord is still renovating the apartment which she left. He was in a rage when he found what condition she left it in. Okay, cool. She's a shitty neighbor. What's new? The truth is Peggy Goo, he puts her real name there, I can't pronounce that, I uh, can, Min Jin Kim, I guess, is one of the most crude, tacky, greedy, narcissistic, abusive, troubling persons I've ever met in my whole life. Now, Dan Yuang, be honest with me, is she the only DJ you've met that kind of, you know, could be ascribed those terms? Really? Come on, brother. I mean, 100%. See, everyone in Berlin knew that we were neighbors, so they told me everything about every encounter with her. I've been burdened with the, every anecdote since 2017. Imagine, imagine, imagine being Daniel Wang, and the thing that burdens you is not the, the, the uh, you know, the rising price, the rising uh, cost of rent in Berlin, the global pandemic that's crippling your entire country. The prospect of not being able to DJ again for the rest of your life. Whatever else going on in the world. Imagine your biggest worry in your head is the fact that people have told you mean stories about Peggy Goo or bad experiences they've had with her. Imagine. He said, I don't even know how to begin. I tried my best and nice to be nice to her at first, ignoring the expensive outfits, the layers of makeup, and the overpowering perfume. Some people have mentioned histor histor what histrionic personality disorder. I could not make a proper diagnostic, but I see a connection. I installed all of her bookshelves and shoe shelves. Again, you're the cuck. If she if she stinks and she wears too much makeup, but she gets you to install all of her shelves, she's one, isn't it, really? 600 pairs of shoes. Did you put them all on the shelf as well? Again, cuck. Hung on her lamps, cuck. I even had her keys and received packages for her, cuck. Which which ended in her viciously screaming at me because I had left a huge Louis Vuitton bag in the hallway while she was in Bali ignoring messages. Yeah, why would you do that? Why would you leave a Louis Vuitton bag in the hallway while she got to Bali? Put it in your room, cuck. We were two Asian immigrants in the same building who we could not try to make a connection. <laughs> Maybe she just didn't like you, innit? I don't know. <laughs> Just, but I always felt that something was wrong I'm trembling and I want to vomit as I finally write this on my Samsung phone this guy is a flipping weapon I can make a timeline of all the incidents but she and I stopped talking about two years ago right before a big record release yeah she got famous she started feeling herself and she went on to she went she got, got went and got new friends it's a story old as time and uh, that's when everyone started telling me her, their stories too she says you see the guy who put on her first record is an old friend of mine gossipy and he also is a regular dj at Bergheim. she started bad mouthing him in the interview he says he could tell me who really produced these releases i haven't verified that again i don't think it's anyone's business this whole ghost producing thing is annoying um everyone receives help in some way shape or form unless you're a genius producer making music is difficult if she's able to do it with people's help it is what it is but these kind of um behind the scene sort of stuff should stay behind the scenes you should be kind of gossiping about it in public to everybody that's really out of order um his wife um had been he says continues that his wife had also been a friend been her friend and lent her two quite expensive eames chairs peggy then refused to return them claiming that she told that she to show them by accident she's a gangster isn't it she's an absolute gangster Right, she doesn't make her own music. She's a pretty mediocre DJ. She wears too much makeup, puts too much perfume on, and then jacks people's chairs and sells them on eBay. That's a G, right? That's an absolute G. <laughs> but she's rich. She doesn't need to sell anything, doesn't she? I've heard skeptics say, "Hmm, kleptocracy doesn't follow that logic." So why are they trying to insinuate that she's actually broke and she needs the money? Even even more gangster. Continuing, most telling of all, Peggy tried working for a while at a record shop for an, another friend of whom we all know. This is the best part of it, and I don't want to name names, but I can think of, uh, but I can think of it if I have to. I can if I have to. The owner came to me puzzled and angry. He said, do you know her? She refused to sort the records or help the customers. Instead, she would come wearing designer outfits, take pictures of herself among the record bins to upload to her Instagram. Bruv, Peggy Goo is an absolute G she did right 
what I guess most kids would probably want to do when they get an internship working at a record store. No one wants to sort through records, uh, record sleeves, label up stuff, scan stuff into the system, organize into the shelf, merchandise it well. What they actually want is to add that story as part of their law and get this assumption that, hey, I worked at Phonica Records. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You might have helped him out for the Saturday evening when they were having a sale, but that was it. And he didn't really help either. He just stood around and tried to look cute and pretty so he could add it as part of your story. And she achieved it. She did it. And again, who's the record store owner who's coming to Daniel James to complain about his staff not working in the store? Why don't you go to her and tell her to pull up a, you know, uh, pull a roll her sleeves up or get out? Like, this scene is full of some absolute words. It continues and when the shop owner said that she should do the work her reply was but that would get my clothes dirty <laughs> but there's more at the end of the day the rare vinyl gems which other employees had dug out would go missing peggy had taken them bought them or put them in her own bag gangster absolute gangster every few weeks of the months that come more news peggy likes to say that she was the first korean to rock Berghain. i bumped into the booker there after her gig and he said to me with a wry incredulous laugh peggy q was nothing like what we had expected we were certainly never booking her again and that was that so everyone this is like a common thing people speak about this supposed gig she had at Berghain where she flopped and she wasn't that good look it happens it's the biggest stage in the world it's essentially the olympics of djing right it's a platform that most you know flipping what didn't um richie horton get chucked out of Berghain for being too larry in there and getting too excited right um residents have been banned from playing there and then being reintroduced it's a place that will probably bring out the worst and the best in most people when they go and play she had a bad gig it happens what can you do? The amount of other DJs I've seen, high profile ones who kind of talk about the art and the art of selecting and all this nonsense who have played absolute dog shit, you know, um, sets in places I've been at, which I haven't really spoken about in open or, you know, people haven't had the luxury of being able to care about saying comments on their, on their Instagram is numerous. So this is nothing to hold her, hold against her. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay, she she played shit one time. Well, what can you do? Shit happens. He says, I come home late on the Saturday night and I saw a tiny young Korean woman dragging a massive load of Ikea boxes down the street. I mean, it was a kind of weight that only a tiny woman shouldn't be carrying alone. I felt horrible for her and I offered to help. Then I realized what was going on. Don't help me. It's okay, she said. At that moment, Peggy walked past us the, size, the stairway <laughs> carrying a light Gucci bag. Then right before 10 p.m., they started hammering the new shelves together. I saw at least three different women help her over just a few months. <laughs> yeah what can we say in it like she's a g she's got loads of friends that want to be her friend hang out so if you're going to be Peggy's friend you're going to have to help her out with ikea luggage you're going to have to you know drag it upstairs in, in berlin apartments which are notoriously which are notorious for not having lifts and you're gonna to have to put it together in the dead at night is what it is <laughs> then one day the old man from the seventh floor who loves the rolling stones came over to arena rage he said daniel are you her friend peggy was insulting and swearing at me she has a door open and slammed it in our face <laughs> i said in germany when you see your neighbors coming you hold the doors open for them again she's a bit of a bitch but again who cares oh and i got to know the head of the former promotion team he's a sweet german man he said to me the whole team basically walked out on her he had never met somebody so greedy he said who tells lies at every turn who would do anything for money or publicity in fact he said you know this is really grim but the, it felt like exactly like working for donald trump what how did he know that um, lying, stealing every, anything from attention or money. To add to all this, Peggy Goo's former agent was apparently so badly abused and harassed by Peggy. He had to go. He had to undergo. <laughs> she had to undergo psychotherapy. I fully understand why, man. This is an overreaction to the extreme. And again, it continues here. Mostly, loads of um, Peggy Goo slander, and it's just all an absolute nonsense like this could have been kept in the i messages this could have been kept to email this could have been kept to texts dms on instagram or voice notes why do we know this information why do we care honestly she sounds like a bitch okay cool so does every other dj every other one um that's the only bit that i kind of agree with in terms of like why was this necessary and again so disappointing it coming from a daniel wang because he comes across as a pretty 
decent guy in some of the interviews I've seen of him online, especially on YouTube, doing, you know, B-size and crate digging stuff. And of course, I mentioned that Cocktail Do More article, which I def recommend you definitely check out. I'll put the link in the show notes for you guys to read it yourself. But he does come across like a good dude. And this is just so unnecessary. But again, it goes to show that maybe this is one of the um, odd consequences of people not having gigs guys and girls are pointing fingers at others who are maybe a little bit more successful than them at this current time and they're just using the opportunity to tear each other down for what really who is this serving if people did know that Peggy was a piece of shit is this going to change anyone's mind probably not and for her fans who love her regardless are they going to believe what he says probably not because he sounds like an absolute bitch in that flipping text absolute bitch and she sounds like every other teacher i've heard um sh people share stories of online um but yeah maddening things happening on the dms and on the so on the socials with these djs out here man they're just going absolutely nuts but you know it is what it is i guess isn't it anyway that is excellent thing show episode number 407 right yeah 407 thanks so much for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual if it's your first time tuning into the show make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and your comment down below and of course if you listen via the podcast app please leave me a five star review and share the show with your friends until next time people see you soon take care bye 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 <laughs>